I would say that the fighter is my favorite class and it saddens me to say that it's also one of the least popular classes and as a matter of fact every time that I had seen people talking about uh, the best possible class or how they feel that the fighter is underpowered or how it's not performing as it could be like the, the rest of the class like they are saying that the rest of the class like the warrior or the thief they do things better than what the fighter does to some extent it might just be the case but uh, in reality if you really want to use the fighter I have to tell you that it's just as deadly as them if not even more because this guy the thing is that it has tools quite a whole bunch of tools and uh, this guy can be the tank of the crew but he can not only be the tank of the crew, he can only he can also be the main DPS, the most damaging character in the entirety of the crew, with lots and lots and lots of survivability. So I'd say that this is the perfect warrior, because he, if you know how to play him properly, then you're just going to be amazing. Now, with my fighter and the build that we're going to be showcasing here, I like to cover three specific fronts. First, Mobility. Being able, your job, your main job is going to be protecting the rest of the crew, killing everything around the casters, the archers, the people that are dealing damage from a distance and that they don't have that much knockdown resistance or means of protecting themselves as the fighter does. So, traversing the battlefield, it's going to be keen to essential. Second, the DPS. And the DPS is going to come into two forms. DPS on uh, more than anything, this guy is going to deal the most damage possible by hitting the weak spots of the enemies. That means that you're going to need DPS when it comes to topple down enemies when they are knocked down on the ground. And you're also going to need DPS on hitting the weak spots of the enemies while you are climb climbing them, which is going to be something that this guy is going to be able to do. And finally, the third front is going to be defense. You need to be able to stay on the battlefield, you always need to be up so that you can fight uh, and protect everyone else. And deal damage, more damage than anyone else. So I'm not going to cover every single skill of the fighter, I'm just going to mention the ones that I think that should be covering those fronts and why you should be using those skills. And first and foremost, I think that the burst strike. There's nothing so special about the burst strike. It's just, uh, it gives you mobility. If you're fighting against goblins, if you're fighting against saurians, if you're fighting against like the little enemies that are just scattered throughout the battlefield and you're fighting against a titan enemy like a cyclops or a chimera, gor, gor chimera and what have you, and you need to get rid of everyone else while the casters are casting like the, the volley or the different spells that they have. And uh, if you see that a mage is being interrupted, if you see that the mage is casting something that it is going to be like a buff to you, you have to use, use the burst strike to get close to them. So I consider this to be a must. It's nothing special, it's not going to be all that much damage, but it is something that you should be using. Now, the Cloud War Slash, I'd say that... A lot of people are going to consider this mandatory because there's a lot of flying enemies. But I consider, I would say that if you're going to be a fighter, you shouldn't really worry. That's not going to be your job. That's why you, you have your pawns. That's the beauty of these games. Uh, the thing is that different classes, like the Thief, does have like means of dealing damage to them. But at the end of the day, that's why you have your Archer. That's why you have your Sorcerer. That's why you have your Mage. The Mages can deal with the flying enemies. You have to focus on the things that you can do as a fighter. And that is one of the downsides. You're not going to be able to deal with flying enemies that much. So that being said, I don't think that this is going to be important at all. Then we have the Full Moon Slash. This is for DPS. Eh, and this is for AoE DPS. But... Never, like rarely, seldom, the enemies you're going to encounter them as this, this little video that you have right here, so it's irrelevant. Usually they are going to be running around. Now, the gunning skewer, uh, skewer, this is the bread and butter of what I was telling you about of covering fronts. This deals massive and tremendous amounts of damage to enemies' weak spots while you are climbing on top of them. And this can be spammable. 
if you use curatives for stamina because it requires quite a bit of stamina or you use the pain from the mage that gives you infinite amount of stamina you can deal as much damage and kill things as fast as possible as you are seeing on the screen right now because of how much damage this thing does provided that you're hitting the weak spot of the enemy so when you're climbing a cyclops on the eye like using the skewer on the eye it just takes a couple of hits to kill them if you use skewer on the head of a griffin if you use skewer on the goat part of a chimera or in the hearts of dragons this thing deals uh, just tremendous and filthy amounts of damage and as a matter of fact i think that climbing this is out of uh, all of the vocations this is the one that is going to deal more damage than everything else so that is why the fighter is so amazing at climbing enemies you should be using this as dps when you're climbing enemies but have in mind that this requires a little bit of fitness because sometimes the enemies are not going to allow you to use this attack so you have to be aware when can you use it and when can you not when the enemies are enraged you're not going to be uh, doing anything else just wasting stamina so it requires a little bit of knowledge on how to use this thing now shield drum you are going to be the main tank of the crew but my advice is that you do not waste a skill on aggro as a matter of fact the aggro from the augment on on itself it's just going to be more than enough and if you pair that aggro with aggro aggro rings then it's all the better like i do not consider that you should be using a skill you should be wasting a very precious skill on a shield drum if uh, you're going to be using this fighter on your let's say for example the pawn it might just be the case because your pawn is not going to be using like skewer or all of this amazing stuff as amazing as a main player could it so yeah the pawns could definitely be using shield drums but if you're going to be the main fighter then no you shouldn't and then we have uh, on the front of the defense we have flawless guard we have vengeful slash and then we have divine defense all of these three guys are going to be means of survival for the fighter and you should never be mixing them uh, one to another. I've seen that a lot of people consider uh, fl Flawless Guard to be actually quite nice and they prefer this thing and I can see why. Because if you have Flawless Guard you can rarely, rarely, rarely ever be interrupted, which is nice. I mean, I get it. Now, we have Vengeful Slash and Divine Defense. Out of these two guys, I consider Divine Defense to be useless, because uh, Divine Defense just gives you that, like that Divine Defense, and that's it. And it only works from enemies that you have on the front, so it's not going to work if you have enemies on the back. Benchful, sl uh, Benchful Slash is going to be the exact same thing as Divine Defense is going to do, but it's also going to retaliate as, uh, as soon as you hit the enemy. And if you're going to be using this thing as a parry, as means of parry, the window of opportunity that you have, uh, it's very generous. Like, if you use it as a reaction, trust me, and your knockdown power and you combine everything with the fighter, you're always going to be dealing tremendous amounts of uh, damage to the enemies that attack you. And the enemies are very aggressive. As soon as they see you, they are not going to just stand in their idle like they do in many games. No, as soon as they see you, they are going to run towards you and they are going to attack. So... The Benchful Slash, you can just sit in there for as long time as you need, and this works as well with dragons. So, <laughs> I can't stress enough how important it is for you to have Benchful Slash. I prefer Benchful Slash over Flawless Guard or Divine Defense. The main thing that Flawless Guard has is that this is going to make you recover from flinching. Uh, if the enemy is, like, toppling you or uh, has you flinched, this is going to recover from it. Benchful Slash is not but Vengeful Slash is going to be dealing DPS at the same time that you are protecting yourself. So I quite like this one. Finally, the main DPS you're going to have is the Maester Skill, the Riotous Fury. This thing, as you can see right here, it just deals tremendous amounts of damage. It just lasers the hellbar of the enemies. And the thing is, what I love about this thing is that if you use this against an enemy that is knocked down, let's say for example that uh, you use this on a Cyclops and uh, you, the Cyclops is just knocked down, you use this on the head, it's going to one-shot it. If you use it against an Ogre, the Ogre is toppled and you, you use this attack on, on the head, it's going to one-shot it. And uh, in some instances, it's going to melt away even three bars of Dragon's Hell bars, provided that you're... Uh, 
hitting the heart properly and you're not hitting like the legs which is sometimes uh, like kind of a uh, eh. it is going to mm, cost you quite a bit of stamina but uh, then again if you manage it properly this is just gorgeous it's amazing now the augments that i consider to be most important for this character is going to be a provocation because then again you're going to be the the crew tank lethality like i said you're always going to be aiming for the target's vitals if you want to deal the most damage possible if you want to be the laser of the crew with a proper fighter you want to have lethality from the archer exaltation this guy uses uh, a lot of stamina like an infinite amount of stamina you're always using your skills you're always using your shield so you need recovery speed from stamina from the mage then we have the strength which is just self-explanatory this is dps from the thief and then we have vigor i like to use this thing right here you can be using knockdown from the warrior as well but i like to use this one because as you were able to see dealing damage with our skewer uh with the fighter is just nuts and being able to not lose that much stamina while you're, while we're climbing the enemies just amazing and then again stamina very important reduces the stamina consumed when performing a weapon skill this is from the warfare so very important this is the combination that i like to use but if you're like for example on the end game and you need a little bit of extra defense you can use defense or you can use uh the the one from the warrior that uh, decreases the intrepidity which reduces the accumulation of the lost gauge when receiving damage so that's something that you can be using as well and then again dominance i'd say that you're going to be using dominance if you're going to be using your uh shield bash i don't use my shield bash that much i don't consider the fighter to be a good knocking down uh, vocation as for example the warrior the warrior is just focuses on knocking down enemies the fighter is going to be protecting everyone and is going to be dealing amazing amounts of dps if you're building perhaps with a, a dwarven and a mace might just be the case that it could be amazing but that's what we're going to be discussing next the augments as for the armor you're always going to be using dwarven because dwarven is going to give you the same amount of protection that the vermundian gives you but at the same time it's going to give you more knockdown resistance as for the weapon the weapon you are going to be swapping it i consider my weapon me personally my weapon and this just me like i said i consider my fighter to be a main dps dealer and as you can see all throughout the rendition of the gameplay that i have in the background for you for you this guy just deals tremendous amounts of damage and he can just be a laser so since i don't consider for the fighter to be as amazing as a knockdown as a warrior I don't like to use dwarven weapons i know that a lot of people are not going to agree with this but i'd say that the battalion kind of blacksmithing works better with a fighter now if you're going to be using like for example a mace then yes you can be benefiting from knockdown power the thing is that the most powerful weapons of a uh, fighter are going to be the dragon's dogma or the carnage and neither both of them have high knockdown power because they are slashing weapons so i'd say that the battalion kind of uh, upgrade guide uh, upgrade path from the from back Bethel, that is going to be the most amazing one of them all if you like the content like never super appreciate it and also you say you're a gorgeous and beautiful person you're in the gorgeous and beautiful beautiful person have a lovely lovely day and goodbye oh, a moment give to me.